Well, the administration has unveiled a 70-point plan that, if passed, would dramatically overhaul our immigration policy in this country. The plan calls for building a border barrier, a wall, making deportations easier, particularly of criminal aliens, and creating a new system of legal immigration that prioritizes people with skills rather than just letting in extended family members on the basis of blood ties. Well, in return, the Trump administration says it's open to granting legal status to DACA beneficiaries. Democrats say the plan is unthinkably extreme somehow. Katie Hopkins is global columnist at DailyMail.com, and she joins us tonight. Katie, it is great to see you. What could possibly be the complaints about the items I just listed? And I think, I think we're fair in describing them. Why would someone be against those? It's a crazy thing, you know. Trump's doing precisely the right thing here. He's trying finally to correct the massive presidential overreach by Obama in creating uh, this dreamer program. It reminds me very much of when my children do painting. They make the mess but they're not there to tidy up afterwards, I am. And Trump is like that. He's trying to tidy this up, put it through Congress, and make it actually legal and constitutional. And I think, secondly, he's then saying, once we've dealt with the dreamers that we have have and we look after them and we've, we've given uh, Congress a time limit to make this happen, which is good, he's saying, not, let's not let loads more people in. He's saying, let's look after the ones we have. Let's look after also Americans. And I think that's a positive thing. If you just keep letting migrants in, you become like Germany. And nobody wants to become like Germany. Except and I think the leaders for me, of... I look at it a bit like a house. You know, I look after the children that I've got. I shut my front door and I lock it so that no baddies can get in and hurt my family. And then I also check my house out to check that none of my daughters have secreted any naughty, naughty boys in my kitchen and I get them out as well. That's what Trump is delivering. And the Democrats cannot possibly be arguing for it because otherwise they're going to lose the opportunity to protect the dreamers that they so want to protect. Unless you didn't care about your kids, in which case you would leave the door open and attack anyone who tried to lock it. But yes. I'm, just on, I'm just trying well, to understand the mindset here. And you deal with it, of course, in the UK, all through Western Europe. Your leaders want open borders. They resist any attempt to tighten up immigration. Why? What's the motive? It doesn't help the economy. What's the motive exactly? It seems to be this idea that the globalist policy, this way of thinking that we're all one planet and we should move freely about it, that seems to be the accepted way of thinking right across Europe. And no matter how much our crime rates go up, no matter how many attacks we have, we keep letting them in. So Merkel's now saying she will reduce uh, immigration into Germany, but still is going to accept another 200,000. And we've just had a court case here where a lady has had all her children here. She doesn't have a right to be here. Her children are in school and therefore she qualifies for all our benefits and we have to find her a new house to put her seven children in. So we do seem to prioritise those that come to us and it's seen as a sort of humanitarian approach right. and we don't put European f people first or people from the United Kingdom first and I think what Trump's trying to do with his immigration plan is really put Americans first and that's a real, you know, that's a magnificent magnificent thing for America and something the Democrats should be embracing because they have a very limited period of time in Congress to get this passed. So it'd be much better if they stopped talking about it and actually did some work instead. <laughs> the one thing both our continents have in common is our leaders really don't care about the people uh, who live there at all. Um, so you've announced plans to go on a tour of British schools and deliver a series of lectures on terrorism. A lot of leaders in the UK are calling on schools not to allow you on campus. Are you going anyway? Yeah, so I get loads of emails from parents and from young people, my kind of 17 to 24 year olds. They write to me because they don't get to say what they think in school anymore. In British schools, uh, they teach that Trump equals hate. So they work that out, that Trump has a Muslim ban, that's intolerant, and therefore Trump equals hate. So they teach that to children aged six and seven. So I want to go around British schools. I am going around them in November 2017. It's the Stand Strong School Tour. And it's not about terrorism, Tucker. It's about asking children and students, so before they get to university, to say to stand up against being brainwashed by liberal teachers and to really ask them to be taught, you know, how to think, 
not what to t think. Um, but unfortunately, of course, the government's come out against it. The Welsh Education Secretary has come out and said, I shouldn't be allowed on campus. I've been banned by a city council altogether. Um, but parents are now coming up because they want me to come into the schools. But I think my main message is that it's just because I'm a conservative woman and I think also being white doesn't really help. I think if I was a transracial pescatarian with a diploma in Islamic studies, I'd be incredibly welcome across our left wing schools all over the UK. I wouldn't be surprised. Katie Hopkins, thank you for joining us and good luck on tour. Tell us how it goes.